Close Quarters Battle, aka CQB. No discussion of gunfighting and tactics is complete without it. It is the art of fighting in structures and clearing out rooms, associated with the most elite of military forces and the most tactical of the tactical. YouTube is saturated, and I mean saturated, with videos about room clearing, doorway entry methods, one-man CQB, two-man CQB, flow versus button hook, dynamic entry versus limited penetration, <sighs> and chances are that you have seen them. This is precisely why I've avoided doing this video until now, and conversely, why I feel like I need to make this video now. Despite the absolute wealth of information available online, chances are that you have the wrong idea about CQB as it applies to the squad. My goal with this video is to clear up some misperceptions about CQB in general, and then use that context to discuss CQB tactics as it applies to squad gameplay. For that reason, this discussion will be heavier on the context of real life tactics than usual. That said, the main purpose of this video is to help tryhards get good at a video game. Everyone will still want to argue with me about the details of real life CQB, so if you want to tell me I'm wrong about something in the comments, just go ahead. Before we dive in, I want to address some points of confusion people might have. First is the difference between CQB and Urban Warfare. CQB refers specifically to the tactical level business of room entry and clearance and other related things like moving down hallways. Urban Warfare, more technically known as Military Operations in Urban Terrain, or MOUT, encompasses CQB by the nature of the fact that urban areas contain a crap ton of structures and rooms for you to fight in but it also encompasses a much wider range of topics. This includes movement down streets, crossing streets, tank infantry cooperation, fighting underground, and even dealing with civilians, not to mention the unique aspects of mount that exist at the operational and strategic levels. Another point is that CQB isn't exclusive to urban warfare. As any squad player will know, even the most rural areas will necessitate the application of room clearing techniques to attack structures that exist in otherwise very unurban terrain. This discussion will be concerned solely with the relatively small world of CQB, not with urban warfare as a whole. The second point I want to make is that not all CQB is the same, and that even the quote unquote small world of CQB tactics changes significantly depending on the context and type of mission being conducted. Most YouTube content tends to focus on home defense applications, for example. What popular imagination pictures being done by a SWAT team or counterterrorism units storming a house by flooding through its hallways into its rooms are what I'll call classical CQB tactics. They were originally developed by special operations forces for the conduct of hostage rescue missions in response to the growing threat of terrorism during the late 20th century. Now, these were tactics that were designed to prioritize speed to put the lives of the hostages above all else, and for use in a relatively permissive environment outside of the structure occupied by hostile forces. These types of tactics are typically called dynamic entry methods. Now by contrast, in squad, you are an infantryman fighting in a microcosm of high intensity combined arms warfare. Fighting inside structures in this environment is different even from the counterinsurgency operations we saw during the global war on terror. In this environment, not only is your primary and sole concern to kill the enemy, but you have heavy firepower to help you do it. You have grenades, you have machine guns, you have rocket launchers, you have tanks, most importantly, because this is video game land, there are zero civilians for you to worry about. This changes everything. In this environment, room clearing is your last option in a long chain of actions that should be taken before you ever step foot inside of a structure. Are there bad guys in the building ahead? Put a 120mm HE shell from a tank in there, or an RPG frag rocket, or even just a hand grenade. Don't enter and clear a room unless you have no other choice. Okay, so you might wonder, if room clearing is a last resort like I'm saying, why bother with it at all? What's the point of conventional infantry learning and practicing CQB when literally every rifleman carries grenades, a bag full of ammo to rearm them, 
and has actual tanks backing them up. Doesn't that make CQB kind of irrelevant in high intensity warfare by the sheer firepower available? The answer to that is that even in high intensity warfare, you are guaranteed as a foot soldier to be left with no option but to engage in CQB and clear rooms at some point. You won't always have a tank available. It might have more important places to be. You won't always have rockets and you won't always be sure that your grenade did the job in the room you just threw it in. In addition, things like grenade usage are integral to modern high intensity CQB, not a replacement for it. In my view, rather than being less important, CQB is more important than ever for infantry to know because you will need to apply these skills and knowledge every time you approach and enter a structure. And because your operating environment is so damn lethal, you will die unless you do it right. So with that, let's learn to do it right and dive into the actual tactics of CQB. This is Battle Drill 6. It is the US military's doctrinal method for room clearing. It is an example of what is called immediate entry CQB tactics. If you noticed a similarity between this and the classical CQB tactics of hostage rescue origin, you'd kind of be right. There is an undeniable influence that hostage rescue CQB methods had on conventional infantry CQB due to a trickle down effect from special operations forces. However, Battle Drill 6 also traces a separate lineage to manuals that originally attempted to formalize lessons learned during and after World War II, which all emphasized the use of hand grenades before entering a room with a two man team. Over time, this doctrine evolved into its more modern form in the year 2000 Ranger Handbook with four-man stacks. Notably, the current iteration of Battle Drill 6 still emphasizes that in high-intensity operations, hand grenades are used. And this is key. Immediate entry drills like Battle Drill 6 call for using speed and surprise to enter and clear a room without taking the time to evaluate the interior from outside. This means that it is very risky and dangerous and that success heavily relies on the kill wound shock effect of the grenade. Let's run through an example. Okay, so let's say that here we have a house that the enemy occupies, and we are now having to enter and clear it. And here is a look at the interior of this house. It's very generic, rectangular, empty, and what's called a center-fed room, because the one entrance is located in the middle of one of the walls. This type of very simple room is not very representative of what you'll actually run into often because there are a lot more complex internal layouts that you'll come across in squad. However, today we're just going to be going over the basics of CQB theory, and so we'll be focusing on how to approach this very basic type of problem. Now, there are two other features that I want to point out to you about this room, and these are these two left and right near corners. Now, the reason why these deserve special consideration is because of the fact that, unlike most of the rest of the room, which can at some point be seen and cleared from outside of the house, these two near corners cannot be seen and cleared until the attackers have actually crossed this threshold and made entry into the room. That means that any defender that is crouching in one of these near corners is easily able to surprise the attackers. So this room is characterized by three major features. First is the doorway, which is the single point of entry and creates a choke point that the attackers have to push through. And then there are these near corners, which provide very ideal defensive locations for any defenders. Now, this is how Battle Drill 6 goes. We ideally want to throw in a grenade before we make entry. So number one man would hold security on the door, while number two man behind him preps and throws the grenade. Now, normally you would have to breach this door, either open it or do something like use a shotgun. Since those are mechanics not relevant to squad, I'm gonna skip over that. So here I'm number two man, and in goes a grenade. Boom, it exploded, and now it's time to make entry. Just a side note, you would wanna make entry as soon as the grenade explodes, 
but for our purposes, I'm going to take it slow. Now, normally, number one man would enter this door, and he would pick one of these two near corners that he would clear, either with the button hook maneuver, like so, or by flowing through the path of least resistance straight through. Which direction he picks doesn't matter for our purposes. This is more something that you would work out with your buddies beforehand with an SOP. The important thing is that the number two man behind him follows very closely behind the number one man so that they're entering almost simultaneously. And the number two man has to clear the opposite corner of the one that number one cleared. So let's say in our example, number one man, he decided to button hook and clear this left side corner. Number two man following behind him would immediately flow through and check this right side corner. Number two man should never be entering a room and be looking in the same direction as the guy in front of him. And that's a general pattern that reoccurs in CQB. You always go opposite of where the guy in front of you is going. Now, after each man, number one and number two, clears their corner, they'll keep moving along their near wall as they scan inwards, like so. And as they conduct this movement, they'll engage targets as they see them until they reach their point of domination, which for the numbers one and two men is just past their corner, standing right about here, at the outer edge of the room, looking inwards. And the number two man will be standing on the opposite side, again looking inwards. You will be creating a crisscross with your two guns. Now behind them will be numbers three and four men. They follow the same basic rules of entry as numbers one and two. They go the opposite direction as the man went in front of them. So say I'm number three, number one went that way, number two went that way. So I would be going that way again. But here, as I'm making entry, I am, unlike the other two, checking the front and center of the room first. And from the center, I would scan outwards like so, engaging any targets as I see them. My point of domination is just here off to the side of the door, standing in the center. Very similarly, number four man would check the center, scan in the opposite direction as me, engaging targets, and his point of domination would be just to the right of the door. And so we would have one, two, three, four men standing in a line, dominating this interior space with their four guns and avoiding positioning themselves in such a way that we could accidentally shoot each other. Let me show you a brief overhead view of how this looks all together using the game Door Kickers. Now, if you're thinking about this even a little bit, you're going to recognize a obvious problem with this drill. What if there's someone just standing there in the middle of the room? Numbers one and two, if they're going straight for the corners first, won't this guy just be able to shoot them? The typical doctrinal answer to this is that all of these entries, numbers one, two, and three coming in for the center check should be happening almost simultaneously. So you can, if you can just picture number one and two entering, number three is right behind them, clearing the center. Now, personally, I don't really buy into that. I think it might be doable, especially under certain circumstances where you have total surprise, but I don't think it's a very consistent and reliable way to safely clear the room with no casualties. And coincidentally, a lot of real life practitioners would agree with me. So what's become common now is what's called the step center or center check maneuver. So this is where before the number one man would have gone straight for the corner, right, either doing that button hook or flowing straight through. But now with the center check, before he commits to the entry, he just steps and checks that center. And he would take care of any threats that he sees. And then once the center is clear, he would immediately move in to make entry. This technique with the center check just adds a little bit more security to the drill at the cost of speed and surprise. I've heard this combination of a normal dynamic entry clearance and the step center called a hybrid combat clearance because it's sort of a mix between these classic more dynamic entry methods and the limited penetration delayed entry methods I will talk about later.
So what happens if you're in a situation where grenades aren't an option? Or worse, where the enemy knows you're coming and is waiting for you outside that door? Clearly, rushing into the room basically blind and checking the corners before everything else isn't peak tactical efficiency. Things like the center check help, but in the end, you're still committing four men to entering and clearing the room without a full picture of what's inside. That's really risky immediate entry is emphatically not a one-size-fits-all solution for CQB, and it quickly breaks down in a lot of force-on-force -force situations, resulting in heavy casualties or the doctrine just being abandoned and not being used. And it's the same in squad. Try it and you'll find that using this battle drill is great for initial surprise assaults when enemies don't know you're coming, or in particularly urgent situations where you have no choice but to enter a room. But it's not a sustainable way of fighting enemies and structures. So in response to the deficiencies of immediate dynamic entry methods, a new school of CQB was developed, what are called delayed entry methods, also called limited penetration or fighting from the threshold. The late entry methods are a great tool to use in CQB when time isn't critical or when extra caution is necessary. The basic principles of these tactics is to first, minimize your exposure to the enemy while maximizing your cover and concealment. And second, to locate and engage as many threats inside of a room from the outside as much as possible before you make entry. So the main thing that delayed entry uses is what's called slicing the pie or sweeping by taking advantage of this threshold that the doorway creates. Now, if you're familiar with CQB, you will have heard the term fatal funnel be used to describe the doorway and how it creates this little choke point, which any attacking force must funnel through, making them extremely vulnerable and easy to defeat in detail during an assault. You can imagine as a defender, I can just shoot everybody one at a time as they come through that door. So with delayed entry tactics, you forget about trying to rush through this doorway and dominate the space from the inside. Rather, your goal is to just focus on using the doorway to your own advantage. If you think about it, this threshold provides you with cover and concealment from enemies that are inside the house. Of course, depending on what material the wall is made of. And this allows you essentially to creep along and look into the room in little bite-sized slices at a time. As you conduct this sweeping process, you are able to control the pace of the fight. I can step back out if I need to and shoot the enemy as I see them and defeat them in detail. You'll notice that once you've completed one whole sweep across the entire doorway, you've essentially cleared out 90% of this entire room from the outside. The only parts that remain uncleared and unknown to you are these two near corners. Now, once you've cleared out what you can from the outside of the room, it's time to make entry. And this goes basically the same as with the immediate entry methods, with the numbers one and two men making entry and clearing these near corners, which are the only parts of the room that you are unable to clear from outside the doorway. If there are enemies known to be still inside, Say you try to shoot one guy, but he ran over and now he's sitting in this cor near corner. You can still lead with the grenade. Or let's say that this house is a two-story house and there's a stairway going straight up the center to the second floor. And we don't know if anybody's taken position at the top of the stairs. The number one man may decide that he wants to double check the center with the center check before committing and making entry. It's all fluid depending on the situation. And this is the biggest thing that I want to communicate about CQB to you guys. Despite what set drills like Battle Drill 6 may lead you to believe, room clearing isn't a standardized test with a clean cut answer. Rather, room clearing are problems that need to be problem solved on a case by case basis. All this stuff I'm talking about here needs to be known not so that you can just throw it at every situation as the correct way to do it, but so that these principles can be selectively applied as appropriate to the situation.
The advantage of delayed entry methods is that you have the advantage of being able to clear out a significant portion of the room from outside while preserving yourself before you ever step inside. As such, you will have fewer enemies that you have to contend with during the dangerous entry process. And another factor is that you will have a much better idea of what you're walking into because you will have seen and scanned much of the interior of the room. Okay, but hang on, you might wonder. Don't you know the three principles of CQB? Speed, surprise, and violence of action. This delayed entry stuff you're talking about seems to be the opposite of that. Why take your time like this when you could just get in there and kill the bad guy? Well, part of my point is that yes, if you can just get in there and kill the enemy faster, you should do that. But in those situations where it'd be stupid for you to just rush in there all greedy for kills only to get hashtag wrecked, that is when you'd utilize delayed entry. In addition, the three principles of CQB are commonly misunderstood. Speed is usually a misnomer. The most common mistake that people make with CQB is to try to go too fast and rush into rooms faster than they can handle. Instead, remember the classic mantra, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. The second principle, surprise, is absolutely a critical principle in CQB. With complete surprise, the best option is often to make an immediate entry. But once surprise is lost, you can no longer keep that up. Instead, you can gain and maintain local surprise by being unpredictable and quiet with your movement so that the enemy doesn't know when and where you're going to peek them. And that's pretty consistent with delayed entry methods. Violence of action is again important but needs to be properly understood. In real life, I've heard it said that CQB needs fast eyes, fast hands, and slow feet. Nobody should move faster than they can accurately shoot, so striking the balance with measured, controlled violence is the key. That said, if you're doing something like an immediate entry, it's important to be 100% committed, because if you're the number one man and you hesitate in the doorway, that could lead to everybody behind you dying in the funnel of death. Immediate entry methods need to be made with complete commitment to flood the room and maintain momentum. So that was a lot of information. Here's a quick recap to help you remember some of my main points. First, remember that in squad, you're conducting CQB within a very specific context that's different from a lot of other CQB applications. That in turn changes the tactics that you should be using. As part of a combined arms force, the best option for removing the occupants of a structure is often to just blow them up from a distance. So try cooperating with the tank or an IFE to put some HE on target. Use your HE frag RPGs and grenade launchers and use fragmentation grenades. But eventually, you will have to physically clear out rooms. Now, a lot of classical CQB will give you the impression that room clearance requires a lot of fast movement to flood structures with bodies and overwhelming force. That can be the right choice depending on the situation, but a far more reliable method of CQB is to practice delayed entry tactics. It basically comes down to focusing a lot more on positioning and angles rather than dynamic movement. And here's another thing, there are a lot of willing players out there looking for a teamwork based and authentic experience. Chances are you're one of them. So the point of my videos isn't to tell you guys that real life tactics is the squad experience. Rather, my goal is to increase the player base's exposure to sound tactics and principles so that the next time they're playing and they run into a dude that tells them, hey, let's do some buddy team rushes on this attack or hey, on me, we're clearing this room out. They're gonna have a rough grasp of what to do so that they can begin to practice and use these methods and have a really amazing gameplay experience. So here's my challenge to you. Be that dude in game. Be a leader, even if you're not a squad leader, and try and grab hold of the guys that are willing to put some tactics to good use. And also, be a bro and hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Move, move, follow me, move, follow me.